everybody. Welcome to this week's Life Hacker podcast. As you'll see, I decided not to be alone. I borrowed my friend's dog, or kidnapped or something, um, to be on this week's episode. This time, because of the most recent Mountain Lion launch, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to go over all the new features in Mountain Lion, how to fix some of its annoyances, looking at a few secret things, and so on. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's new in Mountain Lion. One of the big new features in OS X Mountain Lion is iCloud. We've had iCloud before, but the upgrades are pretty good. You can find iCloud settings in your system preferences as usual. You click on those and you can enable something called documents and data. When you do that, that will actually put versions of your documents into the cloud and save them so everything stays in sync. And iCloud basically in Mountain Lion is all about keeping your computers and everything on them in sync with other computers and other devices. So turn on what you want, turn off what you don't, and just sign in and out if you want to use your iCloud account. Speaking of things that sync, you've got the new notes application and reminders application, very much the same as you would expect in iOS. So there's not a whole lot to it. You can make notes, make reminders, and they sync with iCloud. One nice thing that you can do if you don't feel like typing is use the new dictation feature as well. And to start that, you hit the function key twice. Then say what you want. When you hit the function key twice again, it will transcribe what you said and put it down in any note. It doesn't have to be in the new notes application. It can be in any application that takes text input. One other new feature that you've actually probably been using in beta under Lion for a little while is iMessages. It's called Messages on the Mac, but it basically syncs with iMessages on your iDevices as well. This way everyone can kind of send messages to each other so long as they have an Apple device. It's not perfect, you can't sync it with your phone's actual number, but it's not so bad if you wanted to say, dictate a message to Erica. Erica, this is a test. Sharing is integrated throughout the OS and you'll find it in more apps as time goes along. One of the main apps where it's relevant is Safari. So if you're actually using Safari, you just click the share button here and you can share whatever page you're on on Twitter, for example. And I'll go ahead and compose a tweet for you with the picture in it and you can start typing. You have 119 characters left when there's a URL involved. I'm gonna hit cancel because I could also just share this photo from the finder. I have it selected. Go ahead, click on Twitter in the share area and there it is, it's attached a photo of me and my bag. And I can tweet about it to my heart's content. Now, if that's interesting to you and you wanna set up stuff like Twitter accounts, you can go into the system preferences and then go into your mail contacts and calendar accounts and you'll be able to click the plus sign and choose whatever kind of account you want. They have a lot of new ones, you may remember this in Lion, but now you can add Twitter, Vimeo, and some others. So you'll find that by clicking on mail contacts and calendars right here and you just add what you want. AirPlay support in Mountain Lion has been increased by allowing you to share your screen with an Apple TV. If you want to do that, you'll actually find these settings in Displays, and you have to make sure that Show Mirroring Options in the menu bar when available is checked. Then you'll see this, and it will turn itself on and off depending on what options are actually available on your network, and you'll be able to select an Apple TV from the list and mirror your display at will. There are a couple of new privacy and security settings that you'll want to know about in OS X Mountain Lion, and you can find them in the Security and Privacy tab in System Preferences. First of all, there's no sandboxing of apps, which means that when you download an app, if it's not signed by the developer and approved by Apple, then it won't let you run it. Um, by default, it will let you use a Mac App Store and identified developer's app. So some apps will run even if you don't download them from the Mac App Store. If you want to restrict this further, you can choose Mac App Store, and that only those applications will work, or you can choose anywhere and anything will work, although you'll still get a warning if it was downloaded from the internet. Additionally, you'll want to check out the Privacy tab. You'll notice here that there are location services, contacts, Twitter, diagnostics, and usage, etc. And you can see that certain apps are allowed access to these settings. If you don't want an app to have access to your contacts or location services or whatever, you just need to uncheck the box next to its name. There's still plenty more to explore, like renaming a file from the title bar, a better widget browser in the dashboard, search and launch pad, software updates in the Mac App Store, encrypted backups in Time Machine, and plenty more. But that should be enough to get you started. Enjoy OS X Mountain Lion and check lifehacker.com for lots more coverage on how to use it even better. Wasn't that fun, Dickens? That was great. Okay. Well, now that we know everything new in Mountain Lion, we can go ahead and take a look at how to prep your Mac for it. There are things you're going to want to do before you actually install to make sure everything goes smoothly. So Milani is going to join us and tell us what's what. 
Before you upgrade your Mac to Mountain Lion, it's a good idea to do a couple of things to make sure that the upgrade will go smoothly. And if the upgrade doesn't go smoothly, that you'll still have your data intact and you'll be able to revert to your previous operating system. So here are recommendations for what you should do before you upgrade. The first is to make sure that your system can actually upgrade to Mountain Lion and meet the system requirements. And you can find that information on our website or on Apple's website. And the second thing is to make sure that your favorite apps or the ones that you really rely on are compatible as well. And you'll be able to check a whole giant list at roaringapps.com. And once you know that everything is supposed to work, um, it's time to do a little bit of system maintenance, things that you probably should be doing anyway. And that includes cleaning up your hard drive and checking for hard drive errors and doing system updates. So we recommend using OS X's built-in disk utility to check for errors on your disk, um, cleaning up your hard drive with things like App Cleaner, and to find uh, the system updates then you'll go to the Apple menu and just run your system updates. And then after that it's just time to back up. So back up all your files uh, to an external hard drive for example using Time Machine or for even extra peace of mind, you can use um, a cloning tool like Carbon Copy Cloner. There's only one more thing that you might want to do if you have extra time, and that's to clean up your iCloud synced items. So clean up your um, email and contacts and bookmarks. And the reason is that Mountain Lion really tightly integrates iCloud into its operating system. So cleaning these things up ahead of time will just put you one step ahead of the game. It's not necessary, but if you have time. And that's it. Um, just keep in mind that a lot of these things can take a long time to do, um, hours even, so just plan your upgrade accordingly. And good luck. So with Mountain Lion installed on your Mac, you are all set to go, but there are probably a few things you'll find annoying. There are definitely a couple that we found annoying, and Thorin's going to point them out for you and tell you how to fix them. So with the launch of any new operating system, inevitably comes a list of annoyances, and Mountain Lion's no different from any other software launch. Um, thankfully, everything's really easy to fix. Um, the, the big annoyance a lot of people have with Mountain Lion and Lion before it is the sort of iOS-style interface, and that's super easy to fix with a little piece of free software called Lion Tweaks 2. You can kind of go in, turn settings on and off, make it look less iOS-y, make it perform a little bit less iOS-y and uh, you're good to go. Um, if not, you can pop into our post from last year about Lion and change everything manually. Um, the other weird thing is the way uh, some of the default settings are set up. So Gatekeeper, which is great, and uh, is the security setting. Uh, unfortunately, it's set for grandma mode initially, um, so you can only download and use apps from the Mac App Store, which is really annoying if you download from third-party sites. Um, so hop in there, change that setting to allow anywhere, and you'll be good to go from there. The other weird thing is Notification Center. All notifications for Apple products are on initially, so you might get a notification for something like Game Center while you're sitting there trying to work. Um, so go in, tweak your notification settings so that you're happy with them and software you actually use, and uh, you'll be good to go from there. The last thing, as far as default settings are concerned, is automatic updates, which anyone that owns a older Mac especially knows Sometimes those software updates totally kill your Mac. Um, I've had my 2007 MacBook Pro Wi-Fi stop working after a software update once. So I like to wait about a week, especially on that system, to update just to make sure that there's no weird problems. So you might want to turn that off, um, if you're not, if, especially if you have an older Mac. Um, otherwise, you can leave it on. It doesn't, you know, you know auto update automatically. Everything will go happily, and you won't ever know what happened. Um, other than that, there's just a few weird um, compatibility issues, notification center, airplay mirroring, um, Check out the full post for all the details, and enjoy your mountain lining. Thanks. Well, Dickens needed to take a break. It was a little too much stardom for her, so I'm going to continue on alone. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about, and that was a, a big part of our coverage last week with Mountain Lion, are the hidden features that Apple didn't really talk about too much. Now, you can find a huge list of 200-plus features on their webpage, but... Uh, let's highlight a couple of some of the best ones and some that you know they didn't even mention. Uh, my favorite is by far the file sharing in screen sharing. And what that means is when you're using screen sharing to get into a remote Mac, you can just drag a file onto the screen that you're sharing and it will copy over the network. So this is really cool. It's been a part of Apple's remote desktop software for a while, 
but it hasn't worked that well in uh, in honesty and uh they it's good that they've made it more of a consumer a consumer feature in screen sharing because it it's really i think more relevant there but the new version of mountain lion works really really well you just drag it it copies it's it's so unbelievably simple um the only downside is that both machines have to be running mountain lion so you got to have all your macs upgraded otherwise you can't use this feature another really cool one it's not really i guess it's not really uh, a, a shiny, awesome feature, but uh, one of the annoying things is that when you want to rename a file in Mountain Lion, uh, one of the things, what you have to do is kind of close that file, go into the finder, you know, find the file, rename it, and then open it back up again. But now in Mountain Lion, you can just click on the title bar and choose rename, and that's pretty cool. One other awesome feature that we're going to mention before we call it quits and just send you to the link where you can see a whole bunch of them is that you can actually go into preview, open up a PDF document, and scan in a new page if you want to add a page into it. Uh, to do this, you just go into the edit menu and you go into the and then the insert submenu. And then from there you will find a whole bunch of options where you can insert a page from a file or or from directly from your scanner, which is pretty cool. So aside from that, there are tons of new features. You can follow the link on your screen or check out the show notes for uh, for a few more. Um, but one thing to leave you with is a little Easter egg that Gizmodo found, and that is if you go into your uh, if you go into your applications folder while an app is installing and check the modified date or created date. I'm not I don't remember which one it is, but um, if you go in and look at that while the app is installing, you'll see that it says uh, some date in 1984, which happens to be the date that the Macintosh was created. So every new app that installs will have that date until it's finished installing, which is Kind of a, a cute little throwback uh, to the original Macintosh. So on top of that, for those of you who are Windows users who really would like something more than all this crazy Mac coverage that we've had this week and now the Mac coverage that's dominating this podcast, uh, one thing you should look at is a feature our new writer Walter put together. And it is it tells you how to get all of the awesome new features in OS X Mountain Lion in Windows. And in fact, actually, Windows had some of these features before, like Dictation. Um, Windows Dictation is actually really quite good, and a lot of people will argue it's better than the one that Apple's put into Mountain Lion. But uh, on top of that, you can check them all out. There will be a link on your screen, or you can go into the show notes to read about all the third-party apps that can get you those features. So it's a short episode this week in the podcast. We wanted to really get you informed about Mountain Lion. You can see all our coverage um, by going to lifehacker slash OS 10 Mountain Lion or following the link on your screen or checking the show notes as usual um, to get all those good links. But basically, that's all we've got for you this week. We'll be back with the regular format soon. So in the, and for now, enjoy uh, your new operating system if you're a Mac user or if you're a Windows user, hold tight. We'll be back at you shortly. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to ask us a question, send an email to tips plus ask LH show at lifehacker.com. Alternatively, leave us a message at 347-687-8109. Try to keep your questions to a few sentences or 30 seconds so we can keep the show moving quickly. And thanks for listening, watching, or however else you get this podcast from the internet to your brain. This episode was recorded in Los Angeles, California by the Lifehacker staff and edited into a more consumable form by Kyle J. Norris.